Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your second CSS animation tutorial and in this video we're going to briefly talk about transforms. <laughs> okay then gang, so this tutorial is primarily aimed at those that don't know what CSS transforms are. If you've got a good understanding of them then feel free to move on because I'm probably going to be going over old ground for you guys. But if you don't know what they are then transforms pretty much do what they say they do on the tin. They just transform your web elements in all kinds of weird and wonderful ways, right? So we can use transforms to either stretch an element or change the coordinates of an element, skew an element or rotate it, and we can do all this without ever having to alter the normal document flow. So it's super flexible and we can make good use of them when we come to make our own animation. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just bring you up to speed if you don't already know about them, cover a few basic examples and then we're going to use those in later tutorials when we talk about custom animations. All right. So as you can see, I've opened up this index.html file right here and all I've done is added this image right here of a cloud, which is borrowed from the Mario examples folder here. All right. So just stick that image in for now. Then we'll zoom over to this style.css file right here. And the first thing I want to do actually is just give a background color to this body because I cannot see that cloud. So I'm just going to say background is light blue, much like the sky here in Manchester, I wish. So the next thing I want to do is say text align. And I'm going to say center just to centralize that cloud. Pretty cool. All right, so now let's apply some transforms to this cloud. So I'll just go after the image because that's the only image on this page. So it's just going to target that. And the CSS property we want to use is transform. And that's it. All of our transforms will happen within this CSS property. All right. So there's quite a few different options and I've not got time to go through them all in this video, but I'm going to go through a few of the more basic ones that we're going to use in the animations. And to be honest, if you understand these, then you're going to understand everything I do later in the tutorial series. All right. So the first thing I want to show you is translate and translate just means move the element from one position to another on the web page. So if I want to translate it across to the right, I can use translate X. OK, if I want to move it along the Y axis, I can use translate Y. So let's take a look at those. I'll say translate and you can see these translate X and Y among these other options are already there. So I'll say translate X and I'll say 200 pixels. And that's going to take that cloud and it's going to shove it 200 pixels over to the right. OK, and the reason it's done it to the right is because this is a positive integer and it's going along the X axis to the right. If I made this negative, it's going to zoom to the left. All right. So positive to the right, negative to the left. All right. Let's change this to Y and see what happens. Now it goes down 200 pixels instead of going right. OK, and same goes if I change this to a minus, it's going to zoom up off the screen pretty much going upwards. All right. So that is translate. And if we take away the Y or the X, then it can take two values. If you just put one value in, it's just going to translate it along the X axis. But if we put two values in, so I'm saying minus 200 for the X axis. And if I say now 200 pixels for the Y axis, that's going to zoom down as well. So we can control the X and Y in one file swoop. All right. So that is the transform or sorry, the translate uh, value in a nutshell. The next thing I want to show you is the scale value. So let's say scale. And what scale does is just scale the element. OK, it makes it bigger or smaller. So again, we can do scale X or scale Y. I'm going to do scale X to begin with. And that's just going to kind of stretch it or shrink it along the X axis, depending on what we put in it. If we put in one, it's going to do nothing. This is saying we want a one to one scale. All right. But anything above one is going to stretch it Anything less than one down to zero is going to shrink it. So let's do, first of all, three. That's going to make it three times as big. All right. If we say 0 0.5, that's going to make it twice as small. All right. And we can do the same with the Y axis as well. So we'll say scale Y and that's just going to shrink it along the Y axis. Again, if I make this a positive integer over one, then it's going to stretch it along the Y axis off the page. In fact, all right. And much like we could combine them with the um, translate value, we can do the same thing with scale. We take off the Y and if we just pass in one number that scales it along the X 
and y this time, okay? So it's three times as big along the x-axis and three times as big along the y-axis. If we pass in two numbers, it's the x first, then the y, okay? So that is the scale value. We use that to either shrink or stretch an element. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the rotate. Okay, and again, we can have X, Y, and Z. Now, these are quite hard to see when we use X and Y. So if I say rotate X, right, what this is going to do is rotate it along the X axis. So you imagine a line going across right here, okay, and it's on the X axis. Now, um, you know when you see those things where they put a pig on one of those kind of roasting poles and they turn it? That's what will happen if we use rotate X. It's going to kind of rotate it along the x-axis, imagine it turning into the page. So we can't really see 3D, so the only effect we're gonna see is the height of this getting smaller, essentially, right? So if I put in 60 degrees and we say DEG, it's gonna get smaller because it's starting to rotate along that x-axis, and the portion that we can see straight on reduces, essentially, okay? All the way up until a 90 degrees, which is virtually impossible to see now because it's just a flat shape that's rotating along the x-axis. That's all. If I take this above 90 degrees, it's going to start to appear again the other way around as it comes around, okay? Uh, something similar can be said for the y-axis. If I put in y here, then we're going to start rotating along the y-axis, which is downward. So again, it's just going to shrink this way as we go up to 90 degrees. So if I put in 60, shrinks a little bit as it starts to rotate around the y-axis, which runs this way, remember? And then as I get to 90, it's gonna be virtually impossible. In fact, it is impossible. And as we get above 90, it starts to show again. And the further we go up, the more it shows, okay? So that's rotate y. Finally, we can use rotate z as well. And this is a better kind of visual effect. The z-axis runs in and out of the page, like a 3D pole like skewering into the page and coming out of it, right? So when we rotate around that, it's gonna rotate either clockwise this way or anti-clockwise this way, depending on the value that we give it. If we give it a positive value, say 90 degrees, it's just gonna flip this 90 degrees clockwise. If we say 180 degrees, it's gonna basically turn it upside down all the way up to 360 degrees, where it's gonna bring it uh, back around to the start pretty much, right? If we do a minus number, we'll say minus 45 is going to move it around, oops, not 450, around to the left, going anti-clockwise, uh, minus 90, brings it that way, etc., etc. You get the point, okay? So, we've applied a few different transforms here, and we can actually apply more than one at a time. So, we've used, so far, translate, we've used scale and rotate. What if we want to do all three in one go? Well, we can just kind of chain them together. So I'm saying, first of all, I want to rotate it by minus 90 degrees. Then I want to translate it along the y-axis by, say, 200 pixels. And then finally, and by the way, because we've rotated it, first of all, translate y now moves this way, okay? If we didn't rotate this, let's take this out. It's going to go down here. But remember, the... Um, the z-axis runs through the middle. And when we translated it along the y-axis by 200 pixels, the axis point is still here, the beginning point, right? And we've moved it down. Now, the z-axis running through the point here is being turned by minus 90 degrees, okay? So it's moving up minus 90 this way. So that's why it does that. So let's pop that back in. Rotate z, if I can spell it right something like that, okay, rotate Z and minus 90 degrees. Okay, so that's why it's like that. It's rotated from here up there like that. And then we can also use um, a scale one and we'll say two, okay? So now we've chained these three together just in one line like that. And it works sequentially. So the first thing to uh, happen is this, and then this happens on the result of this then this happens on the result of this, so forth, all right? So order does sometimes matter. 
So there is your whirlwind tour of transforms and pretty much we're not going to be doing anything other than what we've covered here and if we do I'm going to tell you about it at the time but if you do want to read more about it then this is a pretty nice website for it W3Schools so I'll leave the link to this down below and there's a few nice examples and some more information about transforms on this page so feel free to go uh, have a read through that and uh, then I'll see you in the very next tutorial.